Will Joe Biden dialing back on and softening his decades of tough on crime positions, will that be a factor in the 2020 race? Biden himself said his name is on nearly every major crime legislation in the past. And in 1990, then Senator Biden was promoting his tough on crime bill, saying, quote, my crime bill is loaded with money for more cops and drug agents, soldiers we need to fight the war on crime. But now the head of the National Association of Police Officers, the country's biggest police group, told us the story that we broke last week that Joe Biden didn't even show up to ask for their endorsement. Let's welcome Republican Doug Collins of Georgia. Congressman, it's great to see you, you again. Your reaction to all of that? My reaction is, is what we do not need is, is Joe Biden pandering to whoever he thinks will elect him president. Somebody that has a position and takes a position like Joe Biden in the 90s in which he was tough on crime, he was throwing people away. In fact, he was the cause of what uh, the criminal justice society that we grew up in and the persecution that we saw in minority communities and others in which they felt trapped. This is the same thing that uh, during the first step out with President Trump and myself and others, we fought to correct what they had went into in the 90s. Joe Biden is simply willing to say anything to anyone to get elected because he knows he can't beat Donald Trump on the issue of the day, and that's the problem we have with Joe Biden. Joe Biden stands for nothing anymore. Yeah, well, now he's talking about getting rid of the same tough on crime policies that he <laughs> championed, like longer prison sentences, uh, you know, pro uh, basically legislation that posts cops and police and public schools to stop crime. Your take on that, he's unwinding his own policies. He is. And I think this is, shows you the pressure. You know, Liz, we've talked about this before. This shows the modern Democratic Party. The modern Democratic Party is a party that does not like uh, civil order. The, they have went it out in the leading group of the far liberals here are wanting to defund the police. I mean, AOC said that uh, $1.5 billion was not enough cut out of the New York Police Department budget. We see the tragic disaster, which is Portland right now in Seattle. We see it in my own hometown, uh, one of my hometowns of Atlanta, where you know, have a mayor who won't back up her police officers down there. What he's trying to do is he's trying to, pa yeah. to pander basically to the left. And that's not going to work with people who want to be safe to walk down their streets and not feel like they're threatened. Yeah, minority communities are really upset about this, saying we need the cops to defend us and help us. Your take on Biden now giving a somewhat of a nuanced position on defunding the police. He's saying, I don't support wholesale defunding, that he supports redirecting police funding toward other purposes. But conservative columnist Byron York points out that when House Republicans said, you know, cut back and redirect money away from Planned Parenthood to other health clinics, that that was called defunding Planned Parenthood. Are we talking about semantics here and definition of terms, or is, it, or is this something that we should be debating what Joe Biden's position is on defunding the police? I think what you have to do is you have to look through it and you have to see it's politically correct for whatever they want to say when it's about uh, money for Planned Parenthood and their vendetta against killing the unborn, they're willing to say whatever it is to justify their position. But when it comes to police, they're saying, well, they're trying to help others. Let me ask you, so look at it across the country right now. Most of our police departments are understaffed, they're undermanned. If you start taking money away from them and redirecting it to social agencies, which I personally believe should be funded with mental health and our drug addictions, those need to be funded, but separately, then what are those police officers going to do that are still left? out on the streets. Most of them are responding a lot of times by themselves in many of these situations, and now they may not even have backup that's close by. That is nothing but defunding the police. It is nothing but taking away their safety, and that's a sad place to be if you're a police officer in some of these bigger cities. Okay, Congressman Doug Collins, thanks for joining us. Come back soon. It's great to see you.